Hello my lovely ravens, welcome back to my channel, my name is Chantelle and we're back in the common room. Yes, it's empty because everything is still modular and still removable. I'm going to take out this window and work on this window and that top window over here today. So I need to take out this extra wall that was normally, well normally, that was previously two or going to be two windows, but now the way I made this into a crescent moon because of the constellation theme in this common room, but also otherwise the staircase won't fit next to the fireplace. So uh, this way the fireplace will fit nicely here and this is a crescent moon which is the aesthetic anyway. So yeah, I just cut it out with uh, an exacto knife and I just need to repaint it. So this is gonna sit there, but I want that window to continue. So I'm going to cut that out and then make the window frame. Done. Okay, I am going to measure how tall this thing is and I need my, I need my longer ruler because this thing is tall. And it is 42 and a half centimeters. So I need to make a window frame that is that tall. And then it needs to fit in there too. So uh, yeah, I need to take a few more measurements and then I will be making that window frame. I have an overhead sheet or um, document binding cover here. It's hard to see, but here's the reflection. So this is A3 and this is 42 centimeters. So it's only half a centimeter short of uh, the actual length, which is great because I can just cover that with, um, with cardboard. So this is the cutout that I made for one of the smaller windows. Obviously we're only going to have one small window in the corner now, which is going to be this frame. Now I want to do the same with this big window because it's the right measurement measurements. It's just taller. So what I need to do is I just need to make sure that the window part, so from about there all the way down to there, but then elongated needs to be 42 and a half centimeters. So that's what I'm going to do now. I will do that off camera because it requires some measurements and it's not very exciting, but I'll be back once I've done so. I now have the right width, which is like that. And I measured this top out as well and the bottom here as well. So now I can mark out the windows and measure it out all the way down and then cut them all out. I have the entire grid drawn out and now it's time to cut. Small window, big window. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna score the middle with the scoring board and I can fold it and then uh, I can paint it black. Maybe I should paint it black first and then score it. Um, but yeah, it needs to be scored just like this one in the middle. The window frame is all folded and black and wonderful and ready to go into the diorama. Same for this one. That went from purple to black. So now the only thing I need to do is cut out the window that goes in the actual frame and then place this inside. 
So here we have the frame. I was going to put this on the front and then uh, the acetate behind it. What I will do, I will cut out this whole thing, hold the whole grate, put it in between two of these acetate sheets. So it's glass, glass on both sides. And then I, I will cut out another one of these frames just the outside of the frame and put it on the outside as well. So that way this part with the glass is on the inside of the frame, like I did with the other windows, which is more uniform. Now that the um, window is done, I'm going to cut out the new hole for the staircase to come up. And I'm going to use the base of the staircase and just draw that out and cut it out. It's that easy. And because it's now hiding in the corner, it means that I get a lot more free, free floor space here. So I'm just going to cut out the entire circle like so. There we have that. And when the staircase comes up, this is what it will look like from a top down view. Now with that cut out, I can patch up this hole and just stick it back in. It's going to overlay that because I have no idea where I left the cut out of that. It's going to overlay that and trace it and cut it out and glue it back into place because this will be covered with carpet anyway so before i put this floor in i'm going to cover that with fabric this by the way is just a pencil grip that i put on my craft knife because i cut so many things it is a little bit easier on my fingers there we go fits perfectly i'm just gonna stick that down with some hot glue I said hot glue, but I'm going to use wood glue just because it will be more permanent and I know it will take a little bit longer to dry, but it will definitely be more of a permanent bond. Just to make sure it doesn't warp, I've put my craft mat under and over so the glue stays contained and doesn't go anywhere else. And then I put my one, two, three blocks on there so it doesn't warp. So just gonna let that sit for a while. Now this is touch dry. It still has some spots that it needs to dry, but that's fine. What I want to do now is I use a massive sheet of watercolor paper. It's A2 watercolor paper for the window frames and it took the acrylic paint quite well. So I want to stick this at the bottom of this thing um, I just want to have a nice finish and even though you will hardly be able to see the underside here I still want to do that so I want to stick that on there well I'll trace it out first paint it dark blue the dark blue that I have for this project paint the sheet that color and then stick it on so it's all nice sealed and um, finished It's all nice and blue. It shows up a little bit brighter on camera, but it's it's kind of dark. Um, let's glue it on because uh, it's all it's all dry and ready to go. I'm using Fabri-Tac glue for this, 
as that dries rather fast and uh, will get, give the least amount of warping. Right, this is all dry and patched up and all good to go, but it's warped us a tiny little bit, so I'm just gonna leave it like this for a little while and then we'll, we'll flip it over and do the carpet. Okay, now that this has flattened out a little bit, it is time to attach the fabric. So, here we have it. This is the fabric for the second floor. This used to be a part of a duvet cover, bed linen. Uh, it's very thick. It's too thick to use as upholstery for the chairs. That's why I didn't use it. I flipped it over. And what I want to do now is trace this onto that floor, onto that fabric, I should say. And uh, go from there. I'm going to get a, hopefully a white chalk pencil. So let's see what I've got. I found out that this gel pen works on this fabric. So I'm going to trace it with this gel pen, which by the way, is a Uniball Signal. The fabric is on and I'm really, really happy with what this looks like. I had to cut out another, an extra half circle because that goes in here and by funny accident, it is a connecting piece and I did not anticipate that, but there you go. Uh, this is where the staircase ends and then this is the landing. I'm going to measure this out around the parts where I want the railing to be or the balustrade, however you want to call it, and measure out the right length. And then I can spray paint it outside. I want to spray paint it black so I can go over it with bronze, like I did with the fireplace. Okay. So I've made the decision to not make curved walls. Instead, I am making bookcases on either side of the library and it's a 26 centimeter by six centimeter piece that will sit on the side here and another one on this side they will have shelves and on this side there will be columns and there will be more columns throughout the ground floor of the common room uh the reason i decided to do is if i make a curved wall there will be no pattern or anything no, no bricks nothing on there and i kind of like the brick texture that I've created here. So I don't want to mess with that, but there's always um, a need for books in the Ravenclaw common room, of course. So I'm going to attach these here, uh, which will solve my problem. And then the staircase will go here, which I don't have here at the moment. And then I have created these little ledges. Can you see that? Yes, these little ledges which is basically where the, um, the floor will sit on. They're very narrow, so it will not basically not lean on it as such until I glue it into place. But well, at least I know where it is sitting or thereabouts. I just spray painted that black. It was this color and now it's black and I'm going to dry brush that with bronze, just like the fireplace. So let's do this first and then move on to the pillars. I need to make some columns and I am doing that by just taking some corrugated paper and rolling it up. It's that easy. And then attaching them with hot glue. So I'm going to make a few more of those and place them in the diorama, I suppose, uh, and paint them. So I want to make them white, probably make a base as well. And the top part and uh, maybe somewhere in the middle as well, a little ledge. Um, so yeah, I'm going to uh, create some columns. 
So I'm sure you all know what these quilling strips are. Um, they just come in a little kids pack and um, I'm going to use them to wrap around the top and somewhere in the middle and the base to make those parts. Um, it takes about four to five quilling strips for the width I want it to be, but it's still reusing materials that I already have and um, I think it will be fine. So I'm going to do this five times and then uh, I'll show you what it looks like. It's uh, very simple. I'll take a strip like so. I'm going to continue this one. This is just one, one of those strips. And I'm using wood glue because it's just very good with paper. And then apply small beads of glue as you go like that. And just start wrapping it around. And that's how I will continue uh, this segment of the pillars. Um, when I'm done with this, I will add some texture paste just to fill in those gaps and to make it look more like it's one piece instead of, you know, a piece on top of a piece. So that's what we're going for. I finished putting all the pieces of paper around the column, I had to cut some normal paper from normal printer paper, but that's fine. And now I'm going to apply some modeling paste to blend it all together, basically. So I'm going to get rid of those ridges that are the paper that were swirled around. Smooth it out. I'm going to push down that modeling paste into those crevices where the column, the corrugation meets the paper, just to close that gap. So making it look like it is part of the column. Smooth it out. And then with a, well, this is a palette knife, but you can use anything really. It's going to get rid of that excess modeling paste and then it should look something like this so i'm going to let that dry i'm going to put that on the other bits as well i'm going to let that dry and then we can paint the columns okay these are dry now and i'm going to cover them with gesso why gesso because it's fast drying it is thick and it will cover the whole thing in one go Just like I did with the library, I am going to put these strips on the front of the bookcases and then paint them bronze. So I'm just going to put them there. And I've got these strips to size because I know what size they have to be. Just going to glue them on like so. And then another strip there. And then paint them bronze. I painted the bookcases, which look really good. 
nice and shiny, just like the other bookcase uh, or the library. And now it's time to paint the columns. I was thinking of doing marble, but I think I'm just gonna leave it white and perhaps put some mottled gray spots here and there. I might do the same with the fireplace because I'm not super happy with the marble that I put on there. Um, but yeah, just make it look like gray stone, white gray stone. And then the top, the bottom and the middle part, I want to do bronze, copper, no bronze as well. I keep confusing bronze with copper, but it's bronze. So I've been trying to add this kind of stone-like texture to it. I think I need to go a bit darker with the gray, but this is all I'm doing, adding gray and white until I'm happy with what it looks like. And so far I'm liking the effect, so I'm going to keep going. I like it better than the marble that I did on the fireplace, so I'm going to just do the same on that. All right, I'm pretty happy with what this looks like. Um, I actually do want to add a marble effect, but with the copper, no, bronze, <laughs> with the bronze. So I'm just gonna ever so slightly add that effect along the columns. It's very, very, very faint and subtle. And you either like it or you hate it. But to be honest, I think I kind of like it. And I made this, the top part of the, of the fireplace a little bit more subtle and I'm going to add the veins of the marble there as well. There we go. This is what it's going to look like on the pillars as well. So let's have a look what the final achievements of this week's video look like and this is how far i've come today we have the columns in which i'm really really happy about and then the top floor the baluster out there and the carpet i still have my one two three blocks sitting there just to weigh it down a little bit because it's not set in place yet the staircase the fireplace I've redone that top of the fireplace. Looks a bit better. So yeah, I'm really happy with how this turned out. I still have to do the floor, but I'll get to that when I see you in the next video, I suppose. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching. Stay safe, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.